Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and on today's video, I'm going to show you how to swap out your graphics card. Now, this is really relevant at the moment here in 2024 when Nvidia seems to be losing the plot somewhat in the mid range and low end graphics card market, and also AMD having such spectacular value at the moment, especially with things like the 7800 XT, which can be easily be found on the UK market for somewhere in the region of about £400 down from its original 500 plus price tag. So this actually makes really good value, decent investment, and obviously there's other graphics cards available such as the 7900 GRE, which is generally a few pounds more, a little bit faster, and also if you're going for something maybe slightly lower end. Maybe you're selling your NVIDIA graphics card, cashing in and trying to save some money waiting for whatever comes out. In order to swap out your graphics card, it's a relatively straightforward process to do, but there are some things that you do need to do in order to make sure that your new graphics card works to its best, and also there's no residue from the previous drivers stuck inside your Windows operating system. So let's get on and we'll show you how it's done. So to begin with, before we actually start removing our graphics card, we need to clear out the software. So there's various ways you can go about doing this. Probably the easiest way is if you go into your settings, go into apps, then installed apps, and then scroll down until you find the NVIDIA drivers. This is where it gets a little bit confusing because there's actually a lot of things. So we've got the NVIDIA app, the control panel, the frame view, the driver itself, HD audio driver, and also PhysX. So let's start off with getting rid of the graphics driver. So we'll choose uninstall, agree to the user account control. It'll ask if you want to remove the software. Yes, we do. You'll probably find that your resolution will change and potentially you'll get a black screen temporarily. So it says here, the NVIDIA uninstaller has finished. Do you want to complete the removal? Restart the computer. Do you want to restart now? So at this point now, it's probably a good idea to do a restart. So now the computer is restarted. So now we can go ahead and get rid of the rest of the bits and pieces here. So let's get rid of the app first of all. When it's done, click on close. We can also get rid of the frame view SDK. And when it's done, click close. We can also get rid of the audio driver. And again, we're confronted with the, to complete the removal, restart the computer. Do you want to restart now? So I guess we better do as it says. So after a restart, seems we're getting somewhere. So now we can get rid of the NVIDIA control panel. And finally, we'll get rid of the PhysX software. Click on uninstall and click on close. So in theory, that is all the NVIDIA software gone. So that should be it, you'd think. Let's take a look in Device Manager and see what Device Manager thinks about it. Now, in order to see everything which Device Manager has still installed, or at least remnants of, we need to click on View, then Show Hidden Devices. Now we can go into our Display Adapters, and even though we've uninstalled our NVIDIA software, we've still got remnants of previous drivers. So we've got the AMD Radeon Graphics, which is onboard graphics for AMD processors. We've also got a graphics card which I installed ages ago, and I haven't used for a long, long time, the RTX 3070. And also we've still got an entry for the RTX 4070 Super because Windows being Windows tries to reinstall the drivers for you and uses a Microsoft driver. So how do we get rid of all this? Well, the easiest way of doing it is to use a program called DDU. So let's try and find that now. I'll put some links in the video description so it'll be much quicker for you. I'm going to get it from guru3d.com and you can choose where you want to get it from. There's two mirrors. There is a EU mirror and also a USA one, so I'm gonna choose the EU. Doesn't really make a difference which one you do, they're both gonna be the same. And you'll get a pop-up asking you where you wanna save it. So let's save this to our Windows desktop. Once that's downloaded, you can close your browser and you'll get a zipped folder. Right click on this and we'll choose Extract All. And now we've got another file which we need to extract, the EXE for DDU, so double click on this. And this will unzip also. And finally we get our folder. So now we've got DDU. And we've got the executable file here, the display driver uninstaller. Now really, ideally you wanna run this in safe mode, 
but in some instances you'll find that it can because Windows will prevent it from running properly. So I would run it actually in Windows normally. In order to do that, right click, choose run as administrator, and then click on yes to allow it. If you've not run this before, it will say this seems to be the first time you've launched DDU. And yeah, it says about closing down programs, make a backup obviously of your system should things uh, go wrong. You can read the license and readme, etc. Just click on OK. So you've got your general options page. I would actually leave this as it is and just close that. The default settings are absolutely fine. You'll get a message as well saying that DDU has detected you're not in safe mode. For a better cleanup without issues, it is recommended you reboot into safe mode. We'll just acknowledge that, but we'll carry on regardless. So now this is the main DDU interface. So let's choose a device type. We want to choose GPU, and then you can choose a brand. So we're removing NVIDIA, so we'll choose NVIDIA. Now when we get to this section here for the display driver uninstaller, it's a really good idea to actually disconnect your internet. So if you are connected to the internet, just unplug the cable. As you can see now, we're no longer connected to the internet. If you're on Wi-Fi, just turn off your Wi-Fi adapter. So this will prevent Windows trying to reinstall the drivers as we go. So we're going to do clean and do not restart because we want to remove the AMD ones as well. There'll be some stuff in the log here. As you can see, there's some, already some things in my log, but I forgot to disconnect my internet cable. So yeah, we all make mistakes. You may occasionally get a blank screen and your resolution may change as it's happened here. Just be patient and let it do its thing. When it's done, it'll come up with the clean uninstall completed. Would you like to exit now? Uh, no, we don't. We've still got work to do. Again, it'll say it's completed there. So because this is an AMD system and it has a AMD onboard graphics, I'm going to remove those as well. So again, we'll do clean and do not restart. Again, it'll go through, do its own thing, get rid of the files. You can check the logs to see what's happening. Okay, so that's done. So clean uninstall completed. Would you like to exit now? No, nope, we're going to keep this running. Now at this point, you may find that you've got a black screen and there's nothing you can basically do. So if that happens, press Alt, Control, Delete and go into Task Manager. And you want to run a new task and just type in explorer.exe and click OK. And you'll get your Windows desktop back. We can close that now. So now I want to check to make sure that it has done what it says it's done. So we'll right click on the start button. We'll go into device manager. We'll go into display adapters and you should find that you've just got the Microsoft basic display adapter. Also, if you go into view and show hidden devices again, that is it. So that is what you ideally want to have just the Microsoft basic display adapter. So that is absolutely fine. So we can close down all of our open windows now and we can shut down the computer in order for us to remove the old graphics card. So now I've disconnected the computer and we're ready to remove the graphics card. So the first thing we want to do is to remove any power cables which may be connected. This one has got the 12 volt high power. So it's going to squeeze the connector in gently and give it a very light wiggle to remove it. And then we can put that to one side. We won't be needing that for our next graphics card. For the next part is to remove the graphics card retention screws. On this particular case, there's a bracket on the far side which we need to remove. So we'll take the screw out of there and this will reveal the mounting screws here. So get a cross-headed screwdriver or whichever is relevant for your particular case. And you can undo the screws and remove them. For most cards, you're going to have two screws. If you've got a particularly big graphics card, you may need to remove three. Sometimes these can get a little bit stuck, so sometimes loosening off the screws above and below can be useful. Towards the back of the graphics card, where the graphics card plugs into your PCR Express slot, there's going to be a retention clasp, which on this one here is uh, where I'm just pointing with my finger. So with this, if you can, you can try and push in with your finger just to release the graphics card and push it into the down position. Then you can grab the graphics card and sometimes you can wiggle it out. Now this hasn't gone in fully, so make sure it is fully pushed down and then you should be able to remove the graphics card from the graphics card slot. Now reinstalling your graphics card is basically the reverse of what we've already done. 
So just do make sure that your clasp is clicked into the fully back position. Then you can grab your graphics card from underneath, support your arm on the top of your case if you need to when you're leaning over, and try to line up this edge connector with your PCI Express slot, and also making sure that the lugs on the back fit in as well. And get things lined up, and you should find with a reasonable push, it'll click into place. You should also notice that the retention clasp has now moved forward and is snapped into place. Give it a little wiggle, make sure that it's all in. That looks good to me. So now we can connect up our power cables. So now we're ready to connect up our graphics card power. So I've routed through a cable. Now something which is actually really important here, which some people miss, is the fact that you have to populate all of the ports. So if you've got two 8-pin ports, you have to use two 8-pin plugs. Now, if you want to, you can possibly daisy chain them, like we've got here on this power supply. Although, to be honest with you, it's not really recommended. Ideally, you want an individual cable for each one of your ports. So if you've got a graphics card with three of these, you'll need a power supply which has three outputs. Now, that isn't always possible, and some graphics cards are relatively efficient, so it isn't entirely necessary, but ideally, if you can, that is what you want to try and aim for. Also, when you look at your plugs, take a look at the actual orientation of the plugs, and also make sure that the plugs that you're plugging in actually do say PCIe, or at least have the right pin connections. You'll notice with PCIe plugs, there's a clip on one side, and also, quite often, they'll be split into a six plus two configuration. If your cable has a four plus four configuration, that is a EPS or CPU power connection. Don't use that. You potentially could force it to fit, but it isn't recommended. Don't do it. It will cause damage. So make sure your plugs are PCIe and are either a solid eight pin or a six plus two. So we can go ahead and plug in our power cable, plug it into one of the slots on the side, and it should click into position. You will feel a little bit of a click. Just make sure that it's firmly in and the plugs go all the way in. Now on this particular one, I'm gonna go ahead and daisy chain these. Again, this isn't really recommended, but for our uses here, this is gonna be absolutely fine. When it's in, it should click into position. Nice little click. And then if you want to, you can fold the cables over a little bit, just for cable management purposes. Don't put too much strain on them if you can help it. They're not as bad as the Nvidia ones, the 12 volt high power. So they have got a little bit of flex to them, and if they're not long enough, you can always buy extensions. Just do make sure that all of the connections on the graphics card are connected and all of them are fully seated, go all the way in. So when you're finished, it should look a little something like this. Now we can make sure the graphics card is secured by reinserting the screws. You can also wiggle the graphics card up and down a little bit just to make sure that it is in the right position. And also something else to bear in mind is also connections on the back here for your monitor. Make sure that none of the slots are actually obscured and that your cable can go all the way in. If for some reason these slots, which are actually normally quite high, actually this bar blocks your monitor cable going in, you won't get a display. So these are uh, yeah, sometimes a little bit of a pain. In worst case scenario, you can actually remove that bar entirely, which is probably not recommended because it's damaging your case but just make sure that those are low enough. And if need be, you can loosen off the screws a little bit. And you can kind of force the graphics card to sag just a little bit, just so maybe you can get your HDMI port in. This isn't a problem on a majority of cases, but it can be and it's something to bear in mind if for some reason when you plug it back in, you get no display. You can finish off by putting the last of the retaining screws onto your case. And that is pretty much it. So now we can go back over to the desk, connect up all of our monitors and our USB cables, and also our internet, and then we can get our new drivers installed. Okay, so now we've restarted the computer and uh, we're back up and running. So our resolution is still not right. So what we're gonna need to do is to head over and get the AMD drivers. So let's go to AMD, and we'll go to resources and support. And then we want to go to Radeon Graphics and AMD Chipsets. So let's click on Drivers. 
I'll put links for this in the video description to make life a little bit easier for you. So at this point, you've got the Windows 10 11 drivers, or obviously Linux, we're on Windows. So we'll download the Windows drivers. This is the automatic install. So we'll just save this to our Windows desktop, and it's only a 44 megabyte file. So once that's done, we can close this window, find the installer, double click on it. You'll get the user account control come up again. So we'll click on yes. Then we'll just follow through this. So click on install. This is going to extract some of the resources. It will start off by checking your PC's hardware for driver and software compatibility. Now, if you're on an AMD system, AMD motherboard, AMD processor, you will also get the opportunity now to install the new chipset drivers, which is beneficial. I would suggest definitely doing that, but just be patient, let it check your system and wait for it to continue. Okay, so it's found our graphics card, our AMD Radeon RX 7800 XT, and it's also suggesting a adrenaline driver, 24.8.1. This is released 29th of August. And we'll look at the additional options. Now, if you want to, you can do a factory reset, which will reset all of the drivers totally. And you can choose a full install, minimal install, or driver only. So if you don't want the adrenaline software, then you can choose driver only. Uh, but we're going to go with a, a full install for this particular setup. You've got the option there to allow AMD to collect information. Um, no, don't really want to do that. And also you've got the option to help AMD improve, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, just uh, click on next. You've got privacy view. That'll skip unless you've got supported hardware. And the next one, because we have got an AMD setup, it's going to ask us to update all of our chipset drivers. So, yep, yeah, this is well worth doing. So we'll click on install. And now we can just sit back, let it do its thing. Try not to do anything on your computer at this point. So it's a bad idea to be doing anything whilst the system is doing kind of system level changes like display drivers and chipset drivers. So just be patient, let it do its thing. And we'll come back when we have something to interact with. You may find as well that you'll get a occasional black screen or your resolution will change. Don't worry, that's absolutely normal. Now it's doing the graphics card side of things. It'll download the latest driver packages in the background and you'll get a time remaining notification in the bottom right hand corner. This is uh, just an estimate. So even though it says kind of 10 minutes or so, realistically, it probably won't take that long unless you've got an extremely slow internet connection. And there we go. Our installation has completed. So it does say there a system restart is recommended in order to complete installation. So I am going to do that, but I won't do it quite now. I'll do this later on off camera. So there we go, some pretty straightforward things to do. Uh, it does take a little bit of time, it is a little time consuming, but certainly worth it if you're potentially gonna be suffering from crashes or instability, stuttering, all those kinds of things, which can result from incorrect driver installation or just bad drivers. So hopefully this video has been useful to you. If it has, smash the like button. If you wanna see more content like this on a daily basis, maybe consider hitting subscribe and then click on the chime notification. That way you'll be notified of all of our future video releases. But for now, I've been Mike. This is my unboxing reviews and how to, and hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.